let's take a moment to remember those who we lost during this episode. Or rather, didn't. Or did we? Well, at least she's more dead than Clara. Ah, uh, series finales. They have a certain thing to do, and when it doesn't do that thing, we end up with terrible abominations like Hellbent. In this one, we kind of have a wedding of River Song, and before I go any further, I do have a bit of a sore throat and a cold, so I do have a drink which I need because I've got a lot to talk about. But first off, remember I brought up in the past that the wedding of River Song had a good first half, but the second half might as well ne well needed to be a new episode. They both of these episodes needed to be two parters because. This, we essentially have the same problem. The first half I enjoyed. Very, it was very good. It definitely acted like a series finale. But, well, apart from one thing. And I've, you may know what that one thing is. Well, several things. And all characters, apart from Tanya, seem to be good the only problem I have with Tanya is she really hasn't made an impression so far. And it's the end of the series. And not even when she decided that violence is the answer. Which came completely out of left field. And joined Miss Quilt. Even then she just... Miss Quilt just completely overshadowed her and we got something that was not interesting in any way but I suppose we should talk about the story Karakinus is back thankfully well when I say back he's only in it for about five minutes actually I'll make that ten and thankfully that he's not going out when I said maybe go out all guns blazing I was expecting something like that, not just one shot and it's over. But then again, I suppose they had to do that considering the climax was in the last five minutes. Seriously. I may not like Hellbent, but at least it had an idea of time. It may have only spent half the episode on Gallifrey, but at least it knew it, want it wanted to spend half the episode on Gallifrey. It didn't just get all that stuff over in five minutes. Even though, do you see what this episode is doing? It's making me compliment Hell Ben. And apart from Peter Capaldi's and Jenna Coleman's performances, I should not be complimenting Hell Ben. Seriously. Anyway, the performances were good, apart from, once again, Tanya. I heard in an interview at the Comic Con panel they did before the series started. That this is her first job. And it kind of shows. She's not as good as the others. Really. And, and that's kind of annoying. Because she was good in the episode 3. And then. She's just. I don't know. Something's just felt forced. Speaking of forced. Those slow motion death scenes. Okay. I understand why they used it with April because well honestly sometimes it works Ram's dad yeah I can I can get behind that Tanya's brothers on the other hand that was a fake out they didn't die I don't think you really need a slow motion thing when they didn't die and speaking of fake outs I was wrong, apparently. Well, Dorothea wasn't evil, the new headmistress. But she probably worked for someone evil. Because apparently the government, the governors, 
are some kind look like some kind of cult that worship the weeping angels. Now, there is good that comes out of this. The weeping angels. It's good that Stephen Moffat is letting other people use the weeping angels for more than a minute. But if if this gets a new series and we does that mean the weeping angel? Weeping Angels are going to be the new main villain because I've never really seen the Weeping Angels as main villains. They're just sort of in for one episode, which isn't bad. But you're going to have to explain this. And speaking of things, they're going to have to explain. Oh boy. April's death. I mean, I'm not. I'm not against that. I know she's probably my favourite character, and most likable character. And honestly, sometimes I don't want to sound like I hate all TV characters, but sometimes killing the most likable character works to a TV show's greater effect. It helps build the tension. But this, I. I'll have to give him, I'll have to give Patrick Ness credit when he said become killed Sh Korokinus you become the king. I'm glad they decided to take that in a literal sense, not just oh April's king now. Yay, she's actually Korokinus. But this isn't gonna last. If they do get a new season, that she's either gonna be killed off completely. Which I don't think will happen, or they just find a way to sh put a mind back in her body, which is probably going to happen because, well, it's going to look a bit weird if Cora Kindness is running around helping or stopping the forces of. It's just a weird finale. And Miss Quill, can we just talk about Miss Quill for a minute? As usual, Catherine Kelly. Good performance, but really, did you have to make her pregnant in the last episode? This is something you could have brought up in the next series if you got one and just say, oh, it's been happening for a while. This is kind of a bit... Damn you. I want to like you, class. I want to like you. This is like... The problem is for me... This is like how I felt at the end of season 1 of Supergirl. I would be happy for a season 2, but if it gets a season 2, it ne it needs to spend that time improving on the everything it needs to improve on from season 1, which Supergirl is doing now it's moved to CW. It's improved a lot. And it's really improving. This on the other hand, it is good, and I do like this. It's just it needs something to really push it up. Like, compare it to others. Other series finales. Like, Goodbye Sarah Jane. That was amazing. Stuff like, well, Pandora Crofins and Big Bang. Plus, it's not to my favourite series, and it's amazing. Sound Utopia Sound of Drums and Last Time Lords again amazing. And Torchwood had some good finales too, like the series two finale, Exit Wounds. That quite honestly could be one of the, my favourite things to come out of Doctor Who. And seriously. I'm not expecting it to bring up calibers that like that, but it should at least be up there around, I don't know. I mean, if Ghost Doomsday standards, like, there are some flaws, but it's good. No. It's kind of like, it should be good. I should be enjoying this. And a good season finale, or a good cliffhanger, usually left me confused. It's me wanting to know more. This left me wanting to know if there's a good season, or if there's another season. Because I should let you know, I'm not a big fan of... TV shows ending a series on a cliffhanger. The only time when I'll let this pass, if A, I know it's getting renewed for another series, or 2, or B, it's, I feel like it's good enough to 
be renewed for another series. This is just... Ugh. Damn it. Why are you so... Why are you you? Also, is it just me, or... Is the... Is the violence a bit toned down for this episode? Like... As you recall in For Tonight We Might Die... When Rachel died, blood went everywhere. This time, there's kind of toned down. I'm not sure if it's just a coincidence or they have toned the violence down. It's re it's it's well. Let me put it this way: it's got it's either gonna live or fall on seri on whether it gets the series two. If it does, it's got a lot to fit. It's got a lot to fix. And I hope it gets series 2 because I've enjoyed it. And I really hope it improves and fixes all the problems. And unfortunately, I can't, probably I can't talk anymore or I won't have a voice. Which is annoying because I plan to do some more videos this week and I hopefully will. But until then, end of the series, I I will give this episode a 7 out of 10 because that sums up the episode the series average so that's 7 out of 10 could do, could be better really should have been the two-parter and you really should have dropped the whole mystical pregnant thing for the next series but until then I will see you soon for the re review of the return of Doctor Mysterio let's see if Nardole's gonna be as annoying as we all thought but until then have a good Christmas see you next time